I'm Claire Hancock and I'm a finance director from Profit Cash Growth and I am today with Jonathan Rees from Tax Matters and I'm a tax advisor. And we are trying to answer all of the questions that you have for us as finance specialists because we often get asked the same questions but because Jonathan, you're a tax advisor and I'm more of a management accounting specialist. We always come from very different angles and we will give you very different professional advice if you yeah, came to us. Yeah, we definitely have different views on things, don't we, Claire? Absolutely. Yeah. So we're here today to share our opinions with you and to uh, lift the lid a little bit on the differences in the accountancy world and the difference in answers that you will get depending on who you ask your questions to. Well, hopefully to. they're going to be the same, aren't they, Claire? Oh, well, no, they're not. <laughs> They never are. It'd be nice if they were, though, wouldn't it? (laughs) So today, we are going to try and answer um, a question that probably both of us come across quite a lot. And that's, if you are a uh, limited company director and you have trading profits in your business that you want to extract to invest into um, buy-to-let property, what's the best way that you can go about doing that? That's a question we get asked all the time, isn't it? And property is such an, you know... As British people, we're obsessed with buying property. Well, our clients seem to be obsessed with buying property, don't they? I'm obsessed with buying property. I've got quite a large portfolio. Um, Me and my husband, my husband owns an estate agency. And, you know, my background with finance, it just seemed like a marriage made in heaven for us to go into the property world. So it's something that I do a lot is I will, we've both got our, our trading businesses where we earn money. And then we need to use that money to somehow get that into buying buy to let properties whilst paying as little tax as possible. So if we talk about tax then, I would say there's a hidden tax that people forget about right at the beginning, which is stamp duty. Would you agree? Yeah. Well, it's an extra 3%. Well, at the moment, you know, it could change, but it's an extra 3% for anybody buying something that is in their main residential home, isn't it? Yeah. Um, And so that can actually make it quite expensive by the time you need a normally a 20 25 percent deposit for buy to let property plus an additional three percent for stamp duty plus all your legal fees etc etc you're normally looking at around a 28 to 30 percent deposit for a buy to let property and i think it's worth to mention the stamp duty because Mm -hmm. because it is hidden and people don't realize and it can be the the make or break can't it if the deal's going to go ahead yeah absolutely yeah So the way that I do this with my businesses is I have my trading business, Profit Cash Growth, and I have another business called Hancock Homes, and I simply do an intercompany loan. So I I, um, make the profit in Profit Cash Growth. I pay corporation tax, business profits on it, um, and then I loan the money. Yeah. to Hancock Homes, which is my limited company. And the reason that I do it that way is because that means that as an individual, I've not had to pay any tax on that money. So my business has had to pay business That's right. taxes. But as an individual, I haven't taken that money out of the business yet. So I haven't had to pay income tax or dividend tax. Yeah, and, di- and dividends are quite high. Mm. You know, we recently saw an increase in those well, a couple of years ago and people still think that they're, they're the old rate. So they can be a bit of a shock. Yeah, especially if you're a high rate taxpayer as well. Definitely. Then it really does... Sting. 39.35% for mm-hmm. a higher rate taxpayer or additional high, higher additional, rate taxpayer. Yeah. 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 It's quite a big jump. Yeah, definitely. So what other tax implications are there? Right. Well, the main one is when you get in the mortgage and it's the interest relief. So when you, if you bought a property in your own name, okay, and you paid all the tax and you take it out of the company and you owned it personally, you couldn't claim the interest as a tax deduction, so you'd be that would increase your tax bill. Whereas having a limited company allows you to use the interest payments as a tax deductible expense, which is significant because most mortgages mm. are higher in a limited company anyway. But you're getting that relief, which is reducing your tax burden. So that would be yeah. the, that would be the the big. I think that's the driving force for most people why they use a limited company structure to buy a buy-to-let property. That's the only real significance from a tax perspective, isn't it? Really, is the interest. Everything else is pretty much on a par. You know, whether you can deduct legal cost stamp duty, they're more, they, well, they are the same in a, whether you're buying in a limited company or in your personal name. So Mm. when you've got this tax saving of doing this intercompany loan from your trading company to your um, property company, and you layer on the fact that you can now deduct the interest, it yeah. really just becomes a little bit of a no-brainer that you it, should it be does. buying property in a limited company, really, doesn't yeah. it? But it's... you do have to consider that if you have, you know, like my property company, Hancock Homes, when that makes a profit, I can't get that money out 
without paying tax on it. So no. you have then got to consider that. Is yes. That, you know, yes, as an individual, you're not going to be able to deduct the interest, but you're going to be paying tax as you go and you're going to be having that money straight into your pocket. Whereas actually, if you're buying through a limited company, the profits belong to your company, you pay corporation tax, and then you have to pay dividend tax if you want to take that money out of the business as well. So. I think that just depends what your long-term goal is, isn't it? I mean, I find with... Uh People buying buy to lets, they usually got a long term goal. They don't mm. really want the cash now. They're using it to accumulate cash to buy the next property, or, the, or you know. And with dividends, it gives you the option to draw it down yeah. when you actually need it. So you you can play around with what your other remuneration, what your other income is, and you can make sure that you're drawing your dividends so you're paying basic rate tax on them. You know, if your income allows to do it, it's not all about paying higher rates. If you used to draw everything down, you may have to pay additional and higher rate taxes, but. There could be years when you can do things. I mean, I've got a client recently who's um, got property and what they've done is they've reduced their pension coming in every every month over the last year so they can draw some dividends yeah. out of the limited company to make use of that. So they've only paid, they've you know, they've had a, um, the pot's been building up as to speak and now this year they've released some, stopped the pensions, draw down dividends from the limited company and um, that's worked for them. That's achieved the goal that they need to do. I think the biggest consideration that a business owner has to have in the back of their mind, if they're going to loan money from their trading company to a property company, is you have to think about long term, how are you going to repay that loan, especially if you have a long term goal of selling your trading company. Yeah. Because if you're going to sell your trading company, then you've got to repay that loan, essentially, yeah. to sell it. So, you know, over the years... Um, you know, I've, I loan six figures between the companies every year. So that's built up quite a lot to multi, this multi six figure debt that my property company owns my trading company. And if I want to sell profit cash growth, I've got to find the money to repay that. So you've got to have a clear longer term goal in, in the back of your mind as to and how you're going to deal think with that. If you're selling the properties to do that, and you've got to remember they, they suffer tax, corporation tax mm -hmm. rates, which currently at the minute are 25% where if you own a residential property privately, as the rates stand today, 24%. Yeah, it's been lowered, hasn't it, temporarily? Yeah. And you've got your annual allowance as well. Mm. So that, that could have some impact on you, depending on, on what's going on yeah. as well. Although one of the benefits of, um, you know, we're getting maybe a little bit technical with this, but there's something called realised gains and unrealised gains. And if you, um, when your property goes up in value, you can increase the mortgage, but that's known as an unrealized gain because it's almost just like a book gain. It's like somebody at the bank saying, yeah, well, we agree your house has gone up in value, but you never actually pay tax until you sell it. No, that's right. So you can be quite clever um, if you're going to remortgage your properties and continue to have, um, you know, the maximum mortgage that you can get on them, then you can use that money that you release from the mortgage to repay the intercompany loan and, and deal with the debt that that's way. Right. I think it's worth mentioning just before we finish, Claire, though, that, if you own properties in personally already, it's very difficult to put them inside a limited company from that perspective. Yeah. And so it's something you need to be thinking about right at the beginning. And if, you, if you've got like a, a portfolio of properties, it may be worth considering putting them into a limited company. But if you've got one or two properties, I think in the main, you're probably stuck with keeping them in your personal name. Definitely limited companies are the way forward and it's something you should definitely be thinking about. And that's the situation that I'm in. We've got the limited company now that we only buy property through, but we've still got several properties in our personal name from back in the day when you could deduct the yeah. interest. Um, and yeah, you're right that if, if, we, if we wanted to move those properties into the limited company, then for the vast majority of people, the only route to do that is to essentially sell them to the limited company, which attracts all of the sales fees, the stamp, the duty. stamp duty, everything, yeah. Ca capital, capital gains, gains tax, yeah. etc. Um, there are a few options, um, but they're yeah. for the more specialist people, aren't they? So there's the option, there's a, like a partnership route, um, and there's also an option where you could essentially um, do a little bit like a rent-to-rent -rent scheme. So as an individual, you could um, do a long-term rental agreement to your limited company who then takes on all the liabilities of maintenance, et cetera, et cetera, and then your limited company has the rent. But both of those are quite risky yeah, yeah, and they've I'll, been I'll challenged say, That's a definitely lot. one I would remember, when, or recommend. When we're talking to clients, we, we talk about... Um, you, but you, the partnership yeah, route. Yeah, the partnership yeah. route usually is the way forward. And that comes from a case called... Um, Mackenzie, if it's off of my head, I think it was from a fair few years ago. So 
it's, it's a, lo a slow process and it doesn't really work if you just got a few properties you mm. need you need a portfolio, need a portfolio and you? most people when we're talking to them about this it really means they have to crystallize one of the properties have to dispose of one of them and get a gain so they can afford to move in to finance all this and really this partnership route is essentially you've got to have enough properties that it's seen as a trading business that's right um so if you've just got a handful then it's generally not and is it is it 12 is that the magic number um, there was a certain number in the case law, wasn't there? But it, w it was quite a substantial yeah, amount. Yeah, it's, it's a sub substantial amount. It, so it, it's, it's seen as a job and that you are trading that, as that, a landlord. That's it, yeah. yeah. It's about looking at um, how many hours a week you spend yeah. running the business. Are you actually running a business or so have you got an agent or are you doing all, the, all that yourself? Yeah. So yeah, it's not straightforward. I wish it was. And every case is very different and has to be judged on its merits. It's nearly always the case with tax, though, Claire. Every case has to be judged on its yeah, merits. That's very true, yeah. yeah. It's very complicated. But there you go. You can see that even as a tax specialist and a finance director slash buy to let property uh, with a portfolio myself, we still have very different opinions on what the right way to do. But I think we do... Wouldn't it be nice if we had the same opinion, Claire? Well, I think we do have a general consensus in this, don't we? That if, yeah. you have pro if you have profits in your trading company that you want to use to invest in property, then generally the most tax efficient way to do that is to set up a limited company to buy yeah. your property in and do an intercompany loan between yeah. the two. But of course... We always recommend that you get some professional advice just to double check that there's nothing individual in your circumstances. Yes, and, and that mainly prevent. because every case is yeah. bespoke. Well, I don't. I actually don't always agree with that. I think no? that ninety percent of cases are the same, but most normal individuals without you know a finance background like us, they wouldn't understand the nuances they need to watch out for that get them in hot water. I think also it's working out what the the gain is at the end what the actual goal is where they're trying to get to yeah that those make it that makes a big difference as well although honestly i don't have a clue you know people say to me oh you know we'll think about inheritance tax and things like this and i'm like i'm in my 30s <laughs> i don't i don't know what i'm going to want to do at the moment i think i don't want to take the profits out of my business because i've got enough money coming from other revenue streams but you know maybe that will change and then i'll wish that i went with a different tax structure but i think you know that's where maybe we're a little bit different well and that well. again as i like to say is for another video exactly. inheritance tax on, on property <laughs> So well, do let us know if you've got any questions that you want us to answer on Ask the Accountant and we'll see you again next week. Thank you very much. Bye bye now.